Hello and welcome to the first tutorial video for the Medique Floor plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I wanted to introduce you guys to the uh, latest addition to the Medique BIM suite which is the uh, Medique Floor or Medique Floor extension. So as you can see um, this extension is technically still in beta which means that it, we haven't released uh, version 1.00 but um, I figured, you know what, uh, we've got this out there in the wild now, so I wanted to at least put together this kind of intro video and give you kind of an overview of what the extension can do at this point. Now, just a word of caution for those of you that may be viewing this introductory video in the future, uh, especially in the far future, you know, two to three years from now, chances are um, the uh, number of toolbars, uh, the features, it's going to update, it's going to change, I'm going to add things. So, you know, things uh, will be probably quite a bit more expanded from what you're going to see here. But um, subsequent tutorial videos, of course, will show you all of those uh, additional features that I will probably be adding here shortly. So uh, let's jump into it here and um, just talk a little bit about the Medique BIM uh, suite or uh, bundle. Um, the floor plugin now is the fifth extension that is being added and should be the final actual extension that's added to this uh, bundle. So we now have the truss, the wall, the foundation, the floor, and the project extensions. So uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, I think I started really in uh, earnest on this plugin about 2022 and due to some uh, medical problems that I encountered um, kind of set me back a while but finally you know we've got this thing out so I'm excited to uh, show that to you guys okay to start with uh, let's take a look at the toolbar so right now there's only one actual toolbar um, that uh, is available for the Medic uh, floor extension as you can see, and there's not very many icons on it yet, uh, or tools. So right now we have the uh, draw floor tool, the edit floor tool, and the move floor edge tool. And then of course the engineering uh, calculations, which um, all the extensions have this. And of course, currently it's disabled in all of them because I'm still working and planning on what to do with this uh, particular item. And then of course, the, uh, just like all the extens other extensions, uh, we have the global settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that back. And then I'm going to just jump in the global settings real quick. Um, you know, like I said, currently there's not a lot fleshed out in here yet, but pretty similar actually to all of the other extensions. So in the general tab, you're going to see similar kind of to the truss extension, you know, your call out, your annotations, construction dimensions, some of the user interface stuff. I think the most important thing I want to point out here in the general tab is that we have subtractive geometry and if you are going to be using subtractive geometry um, you want to make sure that you turn this on. I think it's off or no by default so you want to go ahead and turn that on. All right, layers tab, um, very similar to all other extensions. Um, you can turn on custom layers and if you don't of course the layers uh, everything gets dropped on layer zero or the default layer so I highly recommend that you do turn on the custom layers you can do that right here and um, and I think also by default this is turned off so you do want to turn this on um, <clears throat> and also there is now a system layers uh, hidden layer and the outline layer that gets created whenever you create a floor those by default will be uh, toggled off or the visibility will be off but um, yeah that's uh, now kind of a, I think we've actually I've already added those into the other extensions but I don't know that I've actually exposed the naming convention of those here within the uh, global settings so just something new I guess um, materials tab very, very similar to all the other extensions, the wall and the truss plugin. I think we've, I just added this toggle RGB input similar to the wall plugin. Um, so yeah, I've tried to get everything up to date. Exact same functionality really. Um, one thing to note though is like with the truss plugin, you do have, you know, kind of the 3D materials. Uh, and I think you will also have the wall plugin. Uh, with the floor plugin, Currently, there is no cladding to speak of, at least not yet. And so I don't, I mean, <clears throat> I guess a, a person could create a 3D material similar to the wall or trust plugin, but it's not going to actually be utilized in the same way or have any Im 
effect. So yeah, just something to note there. Other than that, I think it, pretty much everything is very similar or the same. Um, so the new different, real different thing here is the floors um, tab. And I'm slowly adding parameters here, exposing different parameters, bringing them, you know, from the uh, different menus into here. And I'm sure, you know, as time goes on, we'll add other tabs like insulation or uh, carpeting or, you know, some of the, the floor covering options and such. So there's yet a lot of work to be done, but um, let's go here to the license and that's pretty much it for that. And then, um, yeah, global settings, fairly basic. Okay, so let's jump out of this. Let's go ahead and actually create a floor and see what we've got. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna use my grid tool and I'm gonna just create a grid to make things easy. All right, and I think we got those one foot on center. And then just go ahead and click the uh, draw floor tool. And it's going to go ahead and create all the layers and all the materials. And you'll notice here that a bunch of materials got created, a bunch of layers got generated automatically. And then here we go, we got the draw floor menu. Okay, so the draw floor menu, um, fairly elaborate already. I mean, I, I, I kind of knew what I wanted, so I added a bunch of, you know, a bunch of parameters to it already. So first things first, um, right now the truss option is disabled. There, there's no trusses yet in this uh, extension. So if you need a floor truss, um, you can use the uh, floor truss tool right here and then you can get floor trusses. But yeah, you can do sawn lumber eye joists. So let's go ahead and use eye joists, eye joists here. We're going to just start with a uh, TGI here. Go ahead and update that. And let's go ahead and draw a floor. And I'm just going to make any, and right now I have this in polyline mode, which is pretty standard. So I'm going to turn the sheathing off just so you can see those, those uh, joists. Let's turn off the gypsum that we've also had the gypsum turned on, I think. All right, so there's your floor. And the nice thing about this extension now versus the floor module or floor truss uh, tool is that now you can of course draw a polygon, any polygon shaped floor. And you know, that, that gives you a whole lot more flexibility than we had with the, uh, the previous module. So, all right, um, let's um, jump in here and edit this guy. So just go ahead and click the edit tool or you can right click and hit edit. So as you can see, there's actually a number of parameters here and I'm not going to go through every one of them today, but I will show you a few of uh, the more basic ones. Uh, to start out with, um, like again, here you can switch between sawn lumber eye joists. And so if I go sawn lumber, and of course, when you do that, it, the lumber option shows up. You can set your lumber sizes that you want this floor to have. So here we just got like a regular, uh, you know, yeah, two by ten joists, but. Um, Let's go ahead and I've got the floor sheathing turned on. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on just so we have the visibility on that. And then I'm going to head, go ahead and turn that off here in the options. So there's no floor sheathing, sheathing drawn. And then instead, I'm going to turn on deck boards. OK, so here we've got our board width, our board thickness, our board spacing. We can do lumber, pressure treated lumber. I think I'm going to try pressure treated lumber. And as you can see, we now have this decked. Okay, so it gives you that option. You know, you can sheathe it out uh, like with a, for a subfloor or you can uh, use a deck. Now, of course, if you have a deck like this, chances are you're not going to be putting on a seal plate. Um, you're not going to be sitting on a foundation. So we would turn that seal plate off. So we'll go ahead and that, and of course it will automatically adjust, and there's no more seal plate drawn. Up here, of course, these are under the advanced options. Up here under rim board, you can turn off your rim board if you don't want a rim board wrapping around it. Now, if you do that, um, let's turn off these deck boards actually, just so we can see what's happening with our joists. You'll notice that um, the instead of having the rim come around. And come on this side as, or on this side as well. You end up getting an extra uh, joist drawn at the at the extent of the uh, assembly. So just something to be aware of there. 
Um, yeah, there's quite a bit to show here. I also have cavity insulation uh, set up. Uh, let's turn back on a rim joist, actually. It doesn't have to be, but it's a typical floor type thing. Let's turn on a seal plate here again. So every time you turn on one of these options here, you'll notice um, in the advanced options, underneath it, it tries to keep it contained. So it's like the seal plate options will show up in this little box underneath it, the gypsum options underneath the, the gypsum parameter. So it tries to, I'm trying to keep things organized, but because there is a lot of parameters and things get cluttered really quickly. So there you go. You got insulation drawn in. Now, granted, you don't have to put the insulation height the same as the joist height. Let's just try like, say, seven inches, for instance just to show you what that's like. And you can see that's your insulation height. And I'm going to, um, let's see, turn off the rim just for a sec so you can see that profile of that insulation drawn right there. All right. So now I uh, just want to show you guys something a little more interesting. I'm going to turn off the insulation so we have better visibility on the joists themselves. All right. Uh, let's turn on some eye joists. Well, maybe we'll try uh, Louisiana Pacific. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we got some typical eye joists in here. So now um, the one thing I did want to point out was the joist direction. So as you can see, uh, joist direction at zero degrees is basically. Uh, parallel with the x-axis and if you want to parallel with the y-axis um, then we can go 90 degrees and it will regenerate it parallel with the y-axis okay now right now it's limited to just the zero and the 90 degrees um, at some point I'm probably on the to-do list I will update that so we have 45 degrees and 135 degrees and maybe some other uh, set angles or maybe I'll just open it up entirely I'm not even sure on that so just something to be aware of um, with global settings for instance you can do a global joist offset now the one thing I will tell you though with that is that if like let's say we bump all of our joists over um, let's say let's go eight inches so we're basically moving everything over half a bay right okay so you can see what happened. That moved all the joists. It basically started the joists over eight inches from where it would have normally started them. Um, but you notice that there's a gap here now, right? It didn't fill this in. So what happens is, is whenever you do an offset like that, it's going to go either in the positive x or the positive y direction. Okay. So like if if we're if our joists are parallel with the y axis then it's going to shift them uh, in the positive x direction or the positive y direction just and to demonstrate that i'm just going to go ahead and move this back to zero degrees okay so see as you can see we that shifted in that direction now you you may say well wait a second that i don't like that because uh, i've got this uh, you know i need another joist here right so what i suggest actually doing is if you want to move like it's actually better to I think to use negative numbers because this fixes the problem if you will so if I do minus eight inches now you can use negative or positive so basically what's happened is now the joist that was originally here now gets shifted back eight inches and then a new one appears at the end of the array so that is the best way if, if you're wanting to end up with something like this then I would use a negative offset. So that that globally offsets kind of the similar to the wall plugin where we have the stud offset. So this will globally offset everything. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, offsetting single joists. So this is where it gets really interesting. Let's go ahead and just update that to normal. So now here down in the advanced options, you're going to see these three blank um, and these normally are blank. You, know, you don't have to put any parameters in here. The remove joist, double joist, and offset joist. Okay, so <clears throat> what you do is, is you'll notice each joist has a number assigned to it. So and it starts, you know, at the at basically at the closest to the origin, and it works its way in the positive direction. So that's joist number one. That's joist number two. You can see where up here it's it's. Uh, it's basically putting the showing the entity instance name. Um, so so that's how the number system works. 
So what you want to do, like let's say we want to remove, um, for whatever reason, Joyce number two. You just go ahead and put uh, number, just put the number two right there, right? Okay, and bingo, that Joyce is gone. Let's say we want to, re or, now let's say we want to re remove Joyce two and five. I don't know why you'd want to remove these Joyce, but you never know. Maybe you got a beam or something going in there. And we'll go ahead and hit update. Okay, so what's happening is, is and you want to set delineate these with commas, uh, and you can put in as many as you like, and it doesn't matter which order. You could put five comma two, uh, so you can remove specific joists from the array. All right. Now um, you also have the option of doubling up a specific joist. Like for instance, you may have a, a joist that's sitting underneath a, a bearing wall or a partition wall or a hot tub or some sort of large uh, heavy object that you need to double up on or, or a couple of them need to be doubled up. Let's go ahead and, and by the way you can you can be removing joists, doubling joists and offsetting joists all at the same time so you know you can fill out each one of these as, as required but I'm just for simplicity's sake I'm just gonna do one at a time here uh, to demonstrate it so otherwise it gets things get a little cluttered. So to double joists, um, let's say we want to double joists three and seven. Just put three comma seven in there. And you'll notice that three and seven have now been doubled up. All right. Now, for whatever reason, um, let's say uh, this joist is running into uh, plumbing you know, maybe for your toilet and you got a four inch drain coming down out of there and you need to shift this over maybe a couple inches. So let's go ahead and offset joist number three by, um, let's say four inches. And you can put 4.0, I think, or four, it doesn't really matter. But let's just put four for simplicity. And now watch what happens to that third joist when I hit update. So, and it doesn't matter that it's doubled or up or, or not or single. Um, it will offset that independently of all the other joists. So we can shift any joist, um, you know, any direction uh, as, as we see fit. And actually something I haven't actually tried is negative. So let's try that. And so now let's say we have multiple joists we want to shift. You're, you're going to delineate them with commas again. And you're going to use a, uh, the colon between the joist number and the actual value that you're offsetting in inches. So let's say we're going to take um, let's take number six, and then I'm going to hit uh, colon, and then I'm going to try negative. Um, let's try negative six. Just see if it'll offset negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and update. Now that should make that uh, number six joist, this one right here, next to the, the double number seven, move in the app, uh, opposite direction, and it does. Okay, so apparently, yes, you can use negative numbers. That's not something I've actually tested, but yes, it works. Okay, so um, I think that's a pretty good overview for now of what we've got going on. Again, you've got uh, rim boards. You've got custom joists, uh, spacing, uh, removing joists, uh, offsetting. Um, and now we've got floor sheathing, deck boards, seal plates, gypsum, and... Uh, floor cavity insulation. So there's already quite a few features here, but as time goes on, um, I definitely will be adding more. And I'm always posting actually on the SketchUp forums with uh, kind of my to-do list and um, different things, you know, uh, feature requests and such. So by all means, uh, chime in, give me some uh, ideas, tell me what you'd like to see done, and I will do my very best to uh, make those come uh, to fruition. So once again, thank you guys, and um, yeah, we will keep developing this extension. I will probably be spending about the next six months to possibly even a year primarily focused on this extension, bringing it up to speed with all the other extensions. Um, I, I really haven't talked about some of the features like the subtraction and custom stuff. Um, kind of covered that stuff already, I guess, in the other extension um, tutorials, so I don't know. I'll probably make one eventually here, but... Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, contact me, email me. You can give me a call. Um, I'm always here. So thank you, guys. We'll talk to you later.